importing modules. Python is not written as one huge monolithic programming runtime. Uh, instead, uh, it's written in small pieces, and you make use of those pieces uh, as you need to. One such piece is the so-called math module, and the math module contains a lot of very helpful functions, such as uh, factorial, which we see right here. Uh, so by grouping functions inside modules, it allows us to first know where to look uh, for those functions, but also to only include uh, the functions that we need inside our program. Uh, so that the runtimes aren't uh, astronomically huge by including everything under the sun. So here we want to try to print the, uh, uh, the result of uh, 20 factorial. We want to call math.factorial, meaning that factorial is a function defined in the math uh, module. Great, so we go ahead and try to run this, and uh, it doesn't work. It doesn't work, say name error math. Uh, actually, the precise error you get could be a little different if you're in Python uh, versus if you're in standard Python. Here in standard Python, name math is not defined, but it's basically the same error. Math is not defined. It has not heard of math. Now you say, but wait a minute, Python does know about math. Of course it does. Math is a module that comes with Python. However, anytime you use a module, you must tell Python you're using that module by importing it must say import math. The way you know you're using a module is because we say math dot, right there, that's the hint. This is the module name, math, and the dot is this is a function inside this module. Can't use the math module without importing it. Now when we run, sure enough, there's 20 factorial. And by the way, uh, Python is, oop, 200's a little large, uh, but 50 factorial is, uh, Oh, pretty large number. Uh, so we must import a module in order to use functions from that module. Now you might ask, so what does a module export? What functions are available inside uh, a module? So what does math provide? Well, there's a couple things you can do. One of the things you could do is you can say print dir of math. So let's copy, let's go ahead and copy this code. Go here, and now I'm in standard Python just for fun. So here, I will, I will import math, and I will print dir of math. When I do that, I get, oh my goodness, a whole lot of, here we go. Never mind this double underscore stuff. Uh, that's just for Python. But here, arc cosine, arc hyperbolic cosine, arc tangent, the ceiling function, which gives you the smallest integer that's, uh, greater than or equal to the value you provide, cosine, oh, there's a lot of stuff here, factorial, gamma functions, wow, a lot of stuff. This is not a good way to consume what's provided in the math uh, module. There is a better way. And here is the better way. You go to uh, this link right here. In fact, if I were to run this code, it would uh, actually take us to that link. And we can see the online documentation. This is the way to find out what's inside a module. So here we can see there are number theoretic uh, functions, there's power and logarithmic functions, trigonometric functions. So for example, you want to read about factorial, raises a factorial and a value error if, it's, if x is not integral or is negative. So let's actually make sure we understand what that says right there. Let's go back to standard Python and let's try to do math.factorial of five. But it said if it's not integral, what that means is 5.2 is going to be a lose. Indeed, there is the value error, only accepts integral, that is integer values. The other thing is can't do negatives, negative 2, and we lose, not defined for negative values. So in fact, math.factorial behaves exactly as described in the online documentation. Imagine that. In general, you should refer to online documentation in order to understand what functions a module provides and what those functions do and how you use them.